Often today we see uh, this phenomenon where we want to put in the minimum input and get the maximum output, right? I'm not sure if any of you have been on uh, YouTube any time over the last ooh, three or four months, you will more than likely have seen one of these ads saying, if you had invested just $2 in Amazon Prime, it would now be worth like 2 billion euro or something like that. You know, if you had just, you, 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 but now you still have a chance, you still have a chance, you know, invest in Netflix, invest in Amazon, whatever it is, put a minimum in. You know, it's like, even so, it's like 250 euro, don't you worry. You put that into Amazon and we guarantee you're, you're going to get back billions, right? This idea, put in the minimum and you get back a load. Uh, this is something that teachers have to fight with constantly with the students as well, where they want to put in the absolute minimum effort and still get into dentistry uh, or uh, veterinary or whatever, trinity. Uh, so they want to put in the absolute minimum effort and still get the maximum back. Okay? And the, the same kind of idea can spill into the faith as well. What's the minimum, the absolute minimum I have to do? So what's the minimum I have to give God? And that's just a, a really poor attitude. You know, what's the minimum I have to give him? So, like, what's the minimum for us here, like, in, in community? What's the, the absolute latest I can get up and still be barely on time for, for morning prayer? Or what's the, you know, absolute minimum I have to give? So, like, if, if, if I have a certain job, what's the minimum I have, just like the minimum that I, I, I have to do in order to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly done, like. What's the minimum? And if we spend our lives kind of aiming for minimums, then invariably what we don't tend to realize is you actually get a minimum in return. It's very rare that you invest a minimum and get back a maximum. Because if, and to be honest, if you invest a minimum, you don't deserve a maximum. What have you done to earn it? Nothing. You, you don't deserve to be a doctor if you don't know your five times tables. Because when you go counting ribs, you might get it wrong and transplant one into someone's forehead. So you have to know what you're doing. So it's just normal. So when it comes to our faith as well, I think that's why when I hear the, you know, the Magnificat, right? This is where we heard it in our gospel today. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. I love how, how Our Lady loves, I, this is strange, I love how Our Lady loves, but I love how, how Our Lady loves the Lord. All right, she has this, she has this generous love. I think it's, it's a, it's a, there are two words that we, we, we should be sticking together a little more often. You know, to have a, a generous love for God. The opposite is, is a minimalist love for God. And to be honest, I think a minimalist love for God has done, I wouldn't say irreparable damage, but absolutely horrific damage to the church in the last couple of decades. Where this attitude of, you know, do the minimum for the liturgy, do the minimum for prayer, do the minimum as regards preaching, do the minimum as regards priestly formation, just kind of get all the boxes ticked and just get out. You know, but like th th there's no, because the more we see our relationship with God as, as something that just has, we just have to attain a minimum standard, the more that standard just actually becomes irrelevant. Why bother try at all? If the standard is here, sure, if it's down there, then what's the problem? And sure, like, if it's actually down there altogether, what's the problem? Why, why attain? Why try? Why strive? Why push yourself for something more? Why bother? I mean, if, if it's all kind of for nothing, then obviously it's not worth much anyway. So why try? So Our Lady doesn't love like that, though. Our Lady's love is, is, is a, a, a total self-giving love, right? She loves generously, where she gives her whole self to God. And that's, again, in marriage it works the very same way because, love, see, since God is love and our faith is call, calls us to an ever greater love, marriage should be an expression of, of the inner life of the Trinity, that ex eternal exchange of love within the Trinity. Marriage is supposed to represent that here on earth. So, so marriage should be a constant example of, of generous love. And as we've, I've said a few times here, like, uh, if it ever happens that even within marriage, uh, a minimalist love creeps in, it, it's, it's, it's awful. It's, it, it's a, a horrible thing to see, it's a horrible thing to witness, it's a horrible thing for the kids to be part of because they, they see 
you know, you know, honey, I'm really tired. Any chance you get me a cup of tea? Get it yourself. <laughs> you know, like, Janie, is that it? Just get up and get her a cup of tea. What's the big deal? Um, but when, when, when love becomes so minimalist like that, the, the needs of the other, just, they're not important. I, I, my, my needs, that, that's what needs to be addressed here. My needs, me. Then we begin to love in a minimalist kind of way, if we can even call it love at all. Similarly with God. When I say, oh God, God you know, what's the minimum I have to do? What's the minimum amount of prayer? The minimum amount, amount of time I have to spend with you? Is that young priest celebrating Mass again? Because his Mass is going to be longer. Right? Do I have to spend actually 45 minutes with you on a Sunday? Do I really? Actually, we'll drive 20 minutes that way because there's a Mass that's five minutes shorter. Anybody doing the math? <laughs> drive 20 minutes that way for a Mass that's five minutes shorter. Okay. I, people do that. People do that. Uh, so it's, just, it's an interesting thing. What's the minimum I have to give? And what it leads to is actually a kind of a, a festering, rotting love that doesn't really deserve the name love at all. On the other hand, love should always be striving to be generous, to be self-giving, and to actually outdo itself. Uh, there's a, a group of men... Uh, they call they, they form part of the, the Fathers of St. Joseph. There's a number of them, a number of these groups throughout the country. And the, the founder is, is an American uh, named Devon, Devon Shad. And he, he has this beautiful expression that in a marriage, the father is called to set the pace of self-giving love. I think it's a fantastic expression. The father is called to set the pace of self-giving love. That the father is offering himself, giving himself, loving generously, loving his family generously, loving his wife generously, loving his kids generously, giving of himself. The kids see this. Then his wife feels secure enough in order to give herself generously as well and without that fear that it might be rejected. That the kids see this generous love between their parents and they want in. They want in on it. And so they start to love generously and selflessly too. The Father's called to set the pace of self-giving love, to love generously. And this, so this is, see how, our, how, see how our faith works. I mean, if, if God is love and we're called to be the, his mystical body here on earth and couples are called to uh, embody like a spark of, of divine Trinitarian love, all of us are called to, to this kind of self-giving, generous love, to love generously. So if we were asked, how much time does our faith take? How much time does our religion take? What's the answer? All of it. Thank you, Coleman. All of it. How much time does your faith take? Well, it, it, it takes all of it. Because everything I do, every act of service, every time I'm cutting the grass and sweeping floors and picking kids up from school and doing homework and cutting hair, and whatever else, everything I do is an act of love, everything. To turn everything into an act of love. So how much time does your faith take? Well, all of it, all of it. That's what it means to love generously, to give everything. And so as we meditate, our blessed lady today, who even though pregnant and had her own concerns, she goes and serves. She goes and loves her cousin Elizabeth generously. We pray that we can follow her example and love those around us generously. Amen.